Are you ready to save some money and hit some financial goals? I love saving challenges. I really believe that they are great motivation to help you to hit your goals, to help you to just push it a little bit further and make a game out of saving money. Now, all of the challenges that I'm going to talk about, I have them all in a blog post for you and all of them you can put to any goal you have. So if your goal is saving money, you can use this saving challenge to save money, or maybe you want to put it to debt payments, or maybe you want to put it to saving for a certain thing or investments, whatever you want to do, you can customize each of these challenges to whatever goal you have. So if I'm talking about saving money and you're like, I really need to pay off debt. I don't need to save money right now. You can customize this and change it, do the same exact challenge, but put it towards a debt payment, put it towards student loans, put it towards a credit card payment, put it towards a car loan, whatever it is. So just keep in mind that these are all customizable. Now, first challenge is the 52 week savings challenge. And I have a free printable for you. So definitely check it out in the blog post below, get your free printable. And this challenge, it's going to help you to save some money throughout the year. So each week you're going to color in a little hexagon and put that amount towards saving. And with all of these, I personally, if you're doing a savings challenge, you can keep the cash, but I personally would recommend just transferring it to a high yield savings account. I use CIT bank. It's a great online savings account right now. Their rates are 3.875%. That is crazy high interest rates. And when you have a savings account, you want the interest rates to be high. When you have debt account, like student loans, car payment, you want the interest to be low. So with savings, we want high interest, which Bank of America, Wells Fargo is like 0.01%. 3.875% with CIT Bank is amazing. It is so high. And that way you can earn some money on your money. So transfer that amount every single week to savings. And that's really going to help you to hit your goal. So 52 week savings challenge, it's a good one to start off. Next one is a competition one that you can do with a friend or accountability partner and who doesn't love a good competition. So this one, you're going to set an amount and you can set the amount to be a hundred dollars. You can set the amount to be 500, a thousand dollars, whatever you want, set your amount and the first one there wins. And then you can say, okay, whoever the loser is, nor Piper in the background. Hopefully he doesn't knock over my fake plant. But whoever the loser is, then they have to buy someone dinner or make dinner or bragging rights or whatever it is. But this is really fun because this one, it gets you in a competition with someone, which who doesn't love some healthy competition and also bragging rights saying, you know what? <laughs> I beat you. I won. And you can make this a monthly thing. You can make it an annual. You can do until we hit this challenge and then we can set a new goal. But doing it with someone else is really going to help to keep yourself accountable and really say, all right, I, I want to beat them out and see where they're at. And so that way it's going to keep you pushing forward. The next savings challenge is the $5 savings challenge. So every single time that you get a $5 bill, transfer it hold it, put it in an envelope, put it in a jar somewhere, but you're going to save that $5 and you're going to color in a circle. So this one is going to help you get $500, which $500 seems like a big goal, right? But when you're saving it $5 at a time, it's not that big. So you can do it with cash or you can say, you know what? Every time I make a purchase, I'm transferring $5 or every day of the week, I'm transferring $5 or every Tuesday or every time that I get, if you're in school, every time I get this grade, every time I get a B on something, I have to transfer $5. Or every time I get, if you want to punish yourself, every time I get a C, a D, an F, whatever it is, then I have to transfer $5. Or every time I don't work out, I have to transfer $5. Or every time, whatever it is. So make it fun, customize it, figure something out that will motivate you to transfer that $5. And that way you can also work on two different goals. You can work on your savings goal of the $5, but you can also work on a goal of breaking a bad habit. And that's a really great one to really combine two goals at once, which brings me to my next one, which is don't break the chain challenge. So this challenge, it's almost like a habit tracker where you have the don't break the chain. So you don't want to not have it. So every single time that you are working on the challenge, you're going to put an X, right? And so all the different X's create a chain. They look like a chain, but you don't want to miss a day. Cause if you miss a day, you break the chain and it doesn't look as good. And you're like, well, that, that sucks. I broke the chain. So with this one, you have a quote unquote punishment if you break the chain. So you have to say, 
if I break the chain, if I don't hit my habits, I have to save X amount of dollars. So it could be, you know, I want to break the chain. I don't want to break the chain of the habits that I'm making. So maybe reading 15 minutes a day, maybe clean kitchen at night, maybe eating at home six nights a week, maybe no Amazon for, I don't know, two weeks at a time or whatever it is, or only checking out on Amazon once a week. If you check out more on Amazon more than once a week, then you break the chain or a no spend month, whatever it is, figure out your habits that you want to track, that you want to better yourself. And then the consequences, you broke the chain and you got to transfer a certain amount to your savings towards your debt. So that's really going to help like the last one to really hit two goals at once, your personal habits, as well as your money goals. The next savings challenge is Wednesday weather challenge. So this one is every Wednesday, you're going to pull up your weather app and you are going to transfer whatever the temperature is on Wednesday to your savings or towards your debt. And you can do it either in Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on how flexible you want to be with your goals. But it's going to be it's going to be interesting especially depending on where you live in the country or where you live in the world if you're living in south florida where it's really hot and you're in 80 degree weather almost year round you're transferring a lot of money every wednesday or if you're in massachusetts in winter and it's like two degrees outside that's only two dollars so that may be a time where you want to transfer it to celsius or fahrenheit but this is going to be a great one a fun one where whatever the weather is whoo we got to Gotta transfer that money every single Wednesday and you can keep track on the tracker. The next savings challenge is save what you spend challenge. So for this savings challenge, you are going to pick a category in your budget. And let's say for example, eating out. So every time that you spend money in that category, if you cannot afford to double it, you don't do it. So if we are going to Chipotle and we are spending $13 at Chipotle, if you can't spend $26, then you don't do it. So you would have $13 for your meal for Chipotle and then $13 goes towards your savings. So every single time you spend that money, you also have to save that money. And like I said, you can use this for investing or debt payment. So every time that you spend money on Starbucks, Chipotle, or whatever it may be, then you have to do as well. You could even get, you know, crazy and do every time you go to Target, then you have to do it. So you can do specific stores, you can do specific categories in your budget, whatever you want to do. It's totally customizable. All of these saving challenges, you can customize to whatever goals you have or whatever is going to work best for you. But having a saving challenge to really motivate you to watch your spending and save money, that's a win-win. Next savings challenge is to track every penny. Now, this is something that I preach on my channel is tracking your spending and having a monthly budget where you're going in and tracking your spending. Now, I personally recommend tracking your spending every couple days. If you're waiting to the end of the month, you're going to hate it. But if you're in your budget every couple days and you just go through your credit card statements, your bank statements, whatever it is, your log into your debit card account and transfer all of your accounts, all of your purchases and put them into your budget and say, okay, we went to Aldi and that was $128.53 under groceries. Okay, we got gas at ExxonMobil. Okay, that was $62.52. Okay, we got Target. That was X amount that goes into miscellaneous or household or whatever it may be, but tracking every single penny. That's really going to help you to have a built-in accountability partner where you are, who I don't, I don't want to track these purchases. These are a lot or purchase, 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 man, I'm swiping that card a lot. When you are just kind of scrolling through your bank account, it doesn't look that bad, but when you have to manually enter it into Excel or into Google Sheets, it, it adds up. So that's a great way to have that built-in accountability. And it also helps you to hit your goals. You want to make sure that at the end of the month, you're finalizing your budget. Any leftover money you have in your budget, transfer that to something. That needs to go to savings. That needs to go to debt. That needs to go to investing. That needs to go to something. You need to have a plan with your money. So at the end of the month, you're good. At the end of the month, you made good financial progress and it doesn't just sit in your checking account and become a buffer that's going to get spent. So you want to transfer it. You want to end every single month at zero. So you start the new month with a fresh slate, clean slate, and you're ready to hit the goal for the next month. The next savings challenge is the one month ahead challenge. So this one, you are going to figure out your monthly bills for one month. So I'm not saying your total income 
of a month. But what are those core bills? What is your mortgage? What is everything minus anything they're putting maybe to extra saving and saying, okay, we need to save $6,000 for the month. We need to save $3,000. We can have a month on $3,000 that will then become your emergency fund. I am personally not a believer of the $1,000 emergency fund. I'm personally a believer of the one month emergency in the beginning. Figure out what one month worth of expenses is for you and have that as your emergency fund. So do the one month ahead at savings challenge. So work on getting one month ahead on your bills and color in a calendar as you go. Figure out how much you need to get one month ahead, divide that by 30, and then create the saving challenge around that and really motivate yourself to get one month ahead. That's really gonna relieve so much stress. And also, then you can start working on getting a lot of your bills on auto pay. And once you have that buffer in your account, it's okay when bills come out at different times and you don't have to worry about overdrafting. So long in my life, I had to worry about overdrafting this and that and oh man, this can't come out on this day because I don't get paid till this day. But when you get one month ahead on your bills, it's okay. When you get 36 months ahead on your bills, it's okay. And getting to that point financially, oh my gosh, the weight that is lifted off of your shoulders is ridiculous. So really, really, really work on setting up a emergency fund of minimum of one month ahead. And then later on down the road, you can work to three to six months worth of expenses as well. The next saving challenge is the you have food at home challenge. <laughs> this is a tough one, especially when we're busy and we're tired and takeout or the drive through just sounds so good, right? So good. So the you have food at home challenge is you are going to not, first of all, you don't have to do this consecutively, but for every seven times that you eat at home when you wanna go out, when you wanna get takeout, you color in a little jar. Then after seven jars are filled in, then you get a reward. So your reward may be, could be kind of productive in eating out, or that may be the motivation you need of saying, you know what, if I, eat, if I eat at home seven times, then I can treat myself to eating out once a week. Now, that one time, that one time, yes, that's you know kind of going against our goal, but I'm all about proportion. I'm all about balance and saying, you know what? Eating out one time a week is so much better than eating out seven times a week or six times a week, whatever it may have been in the past. So using this challenge, you want if I just sacrifice right now, then I can do this. Or your reward could be a manicure. Your reward could be a new purse. Your reward could be something, whatever it may be. Or you know what? I want a date night. So we're going to have the reward be a date night or whatever, maybe maybe a blowout. Maybe you want to go get your hair blown out or whatever it may be. So pick a reward and figure out what you need to do. Now, I also want to say this is also changing depending on, on who you are. And be realistic of your goals in your current situation. Now, if you are eating takeout every single night and the cost of takeout and the cost of restaurant food is just crazy nowadays. We got something the other day and it was such a simple meal and it was like $42 for Jamie and I. And I was like, this used to be like $15. I feel like maybe a little more than 15, but $42 for this takeout, it was ridiculous. So you may be spending that much on takeout or drive through or whatever it is. And you can go to the grocery store and maybe pick up a rotisserie chicken, maybe pick up some, you know, pre-made mac and cheese and whatever it may be. And yes, if you cooked from scratch, that would be a lot cheaper than buying it from the deli pre-made. But when you consider how much it cost going from takeout, so you had the takeout price, then you had the pre-made price, and then you had the scratch price. So you don't need to go from zero to 60. You don't need to go from takeout to only eating scratch, making your own bread, making your own everything. It's a progress, it's a regression. If you go from zero to 60, you're gonna get burnt out. You're gonna be like, Kelly, I can't do this anymore, and you're probably gonna eat out even more. So have it be progressive, have it be a gradual sequence, and be realistic with yourself, and give yourself grace. Give yourself, you know what, we're cutting our grocery budget a little bit, but we're not gonna go from $500 a month to $300 a month in one month. No, cut $20 and say, you know what, this month we're cutting $20 from our grocery bill. 
next month. Okay, we're cutting that 20 and then let's cut another 10. Let's make it a challenge. We'll cut another 10. Then, okay, we'll cut a little bit more and get used to the, that new price, that new grocery budget. And then once you're used to it, then you can cut a little bit more and a little bit more until you're where you're at. Don't try and go and cut $300. Then you guys are going to be starving and you have no fresh produce. You have no fresh anything because all you got was processed crap food. So be aware of where you're at, shop the sales, figure out how to meal plan, figure out how to meal prep. I do have a grocery course that is crazy on sale right now. Typically it's $67, I think. It's right now $19. So crazy on sale. It's not mind blowing crazy stuff, but it's really gonna help to motivate you, give you some little tips on ways that you can save money on the grocery store. And you can probably find all the information on the internet somewhere for free, you for sure can, but the course is concise. You can complete it in an hour or two and it's all laid out there and it, you've self-paced all the videos. So it's really gonna just help to motivate you. There's printables, there's worksheets, there's meal plans, all that stuff in it. It's a lot of fun. So check it out, it'll be in the description. The next saving challenge is actually the most popular saving challenge on my website and that is the $1,000 in 30 days. Oh, it's a doozy. A thousand dollars in 30 days is a lot, but you can do it. And if you don't want to do it in 30 days, I do have a just regular thousand dollar saving challenge where you can self pace it. And if it takes you six months to do it, if it takes you a year to do it, however long it takes you to do it, I have a challenge for you. So thousand dollars in 30 days, it's a doozy, but it's really going to help to break it down and bite sized pieces that you can do it. I also have one for $10,000 and $100,000. So if you have these crazy big goals or you're saving for a car or you're saving for a vacation or whatever it is, do these other challenges too. And like I said, they don't have to be done in six months. They don't have to be done. It could be a year. It could be six years. It could be a net worth tracker of saying $100,000. I want that to be my net worth. $100,000 or I want to pay off that much money or whatever it is. You can go towards any goal that you have, but those are great long-term savings trackers and long-term savings challenges. It doesn't have to be short, quick, fast ones. You can have some long-term ones as well that'll keep you motivated over time. Let's keep the conversation going. If you want to know ways that you can increase your income, make some money from home, some side hustles that you can do from home, check out this video here. And if you want to know what 10 things to do differently with your money this year, let's 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 change it up let's kick some bad habits and let's let's make some new goals for the new year check out this video here hey, no, no, no.